Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for another poetry discussion. Why? Because it's Monday, and on Monday we have poetry. We have poetry on Mondays. Look, if you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel, so consider hitting the subscribe button to make sure you stick around for more literary goodness in the future. And if you want to help me out with what I'm doing here on the channel, it always does the trick if you decide to hit that like button at some point in time during this video. Look, there is an entire playlist of poetry discussions here on the channel. I believe, so during Poetry National Poetry Month, there will be a poetry discussion every day on the channel. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I believe that during National Poetry Month, we will eclipse the 150th poetry discussion on this channel. So be sure to be here for that if you like that sort of thing. But today, we have another poem from Emily Dickinson, The Devil Had He Fidelity. And it reads as such. The devil, had he fidelity, would be the best friend because he has ability. But devils cannot mend. Perfidy is the virtue that would but he resign. The devil, without question, were thoroughly divine. Um, <clears throat> so, this is a weird little poem from Emily Dickinson. And Emily Dickinson absolutely loves, love, love, loves, to find weird little words and love those weird little words. One of them is perfidy. So, <clears throat> pardon me again. I went and I, th I, th I got this from Wikipedia. This is what perfidy means. In the context of war, perfidy is a form of deception in which one side promises to act in good faith, such as by raising a flag of truce with the intention of breaking that promise once the unsuspecting enemy is exposed, such as by coming out of cover to take the, quote, surrendering, end quote, prisoners into custody. Perfidy constitutes a breach of the laws of war, and so is a war crime, as it degrades the protections and mutual restraints developed in the interest of all parties, combatants, and civilians. And because I, I think that in the sort of colloquial way, fidelity is maybe not misunderstood, but is too precisely, is understood too precisely, as such as in the context of a relationship, a, a uh, romantic relationship. So this is actually, if you go to Wikipedia and download what fidelity means, Download, look at me talk. Fidelity is the quality of faithfulness or loyalty. Its original meaning regarded duty in a broader sense than the related concept of fealty. Both derive from the Latin word fidelis, meaning faithful or loyal. In the City of London financial markets, it has traditionally been used in the sense encompassed in the motto, My word is my bond. That is what we're meaning a little bit when we talk about the devil. So here, the devil, had he fidelity, if he were a man of his words, he would be the best friend because he has many abilities. He can do a lot of stuff. It would be great to be the devil's friend if he was a man of his word, but the devil cannot mend. Can't change. You're not changing that guy. Perfidy is the virtue that would, but he resign. Um, if he would just go back on that perfidy stuff, the devil, without question, would be divine, would be divinity, would be pure. This is interesting. And one of the interesting things here to really think about is I think... Um, Emily Dickinson has a complex and interesting relationship with religion. I think that Emily Dickinson was a person who, on at least many occasions, if not actually followed through with 
the loss of her faith, I think on many occasions found herself without faith, found herself in the world of Christians, but without claiming Christianity. And when you're in that world, it's still very easy and the best way to communicate to use the language of the religion. So it's interesting to question what devil means to Emily Dickinson. We will stick with the sort of canonical idea of the devil here. Um, but it is interesting. Devils cannot mend. This is not singular, right? Um, just like Satan uh, was not singular in the Bible. Satan. But we're going to look at this a little bit a little bit closer, because I think it's interesting what Emily Dickinson has chosen to do here on a conceptual level. The devil, had he fidelity, would be the best friend. Why? Because he has ability. Okay, we can understand that. But the devil does not know fidelity. Because the devil is tricking you into something for his good. He's tricking you into selling your soul or making mistakes or whatever it is that the uh, zeitgeist says at the time that devils do with mortals. Or the devil does with mortals. So, we have an interesting play here. Because if he had perfidy. He would be great because... Well, okay, let me stop that. Emily Dickinson here is telling us that the devil uses us. The devil will trick you. And that makes him a bad friend. Because by tricking you, the devil is simply using you. The devil is simply getting you to do his bidding. The devil is manipulating you. That's why he's not a great friend. Okay, that's understandable. But why would he be a good friend? Because he has ability. He has ability, so he would be the best friend. Well, what does that mean? If the devil did what we said, instead of tricking us into doing what he says, he would be the best friend. If we were the ones manipulating him, boy, that sure would be a lot of fun. Do you see that turn? The idea that if the devil were doing our bidding with all those abilities that the devil has, that'd be a great friend. But if the devil is expecting things of us, no longer is the devil a great friend. That is an interesting twist and turn, especially in light of those final two lines. The devil, without question, were thoroughly divine. Not fun. Not best friendy. Not totes OMG cool. Divine. The devil without question were thoroughly divine. Divinity is godliness. Because of his powers, all of the things that the abilities that the devil has, he would be divine. It would be divine to be his friend. So not only, not only is Emily Dickinson pulling the rug out from under us and saying that the way we think about friends and valuing them is sort of the same way the devil does. She's also, at the end of the poem here, pulling the rug out from under us. Pulling the rug out from under us, saying the only difference between God and the devil... When, the, when God says he's going to flood the land and kill everyone, he means it. 
When God says, if you don't change your ways, I will torture you for eternity, he means it. The devil is just being dishonest about things. The devil is tricking you. Is that something that we can, is that something with which we might get on board? That God and the devil are the same things, except for one of them is violent to you outright, and the other one tricks you into some bad stuff. Makes you think it's a good idea all the while. I don't know. But this is sort of what I mean when I say I think that there was a complex relationship with her faith. I don't think many pure Christian, purely Christian, I, I, don't, I don't mean pure Christians and the individual is pure. I mean people who consider themselves purely Christian. I do not believe many of them would equate the divinity of their God, because it, that's what divine is derived from um, that cloth. When you say divine, you don't say it by accident. I don't think there are many people who consider themselves purely Christian who would make that claim. That the, uh, you know, if it weren't for his trickerish ways, the devil would be truly divine. These, this looks like such a simple little poem. The devil, had he fidelity, would be the best friend, because he has ability, but devils cannot mend. Perfidy is the virtue that would, but he resigned the devil without question, were thoroughly divine. If he gave up that nagging little habit of lying, he'd be divine. This is such a simple-looking poem. And, you know, um, Norm MacDonald said that the perfect joke was a joke in which the, the delivery and the punchline were the same thing. Uh, he, he had a joke while he was on Weekend Update. I'm not going to get the people right. Um... Billy Joel, or Christy Brinkley, filed for divorce from Billy Joel when she woke up and realized she was married to Billy Joel. In Norm MacDonald's estimation, that was as close to a perfect joke as possible. Punchline was the same thing as the delivery. Almost. In the same way, Emily Dickinson is setting... The, the, the delivery of how great the devil would be if he did what I said with the punchline of if he did what I said and were my best friend, that would be godly. Um, and I am not sure upon which uh insinuation the punchline hinges here whether it is the speaker wishing to predate to prey upon the devil or that the devil and god are the same thing but it's interesting I mean, you could sit here and you could put it back and forth all day long. That is what Emily Dickinson does for us. Look, um, I am currently going through Fairy Tale by Stephen King on the channel. I have a chapter-by-chapter read-through. I will have a review sometime in the month of April. And I will announce the next read-along the 1st of March because I've got a book haul dropping. Uh, where I will have the next read-along included. And I hope to have you back for Mondays, which we will have poetry discussions. I hope to have you for Fairy Tale, the read-along, and for the next read-along that I do here. 
And if you have any suggestions for poems that you want me to talk about in the future, I do poetry every Monday. I will have a poem every day for National Poetry Month. So consider dropping suggestions in the uh, comments, and I will see if I can get along or around to those. And I hope to have you back for the next video.